When I say science fiction, you probably think of this. You probably don't think of this. It's amazing what you can get for $50. I'll give you 60 right now, no questions asked. You know, this bike looks a lot like the bike that this girl lives across the street from me had that got ripped off about a month ago. This bike could be hot. They probably jacked it, these hoister friends of yours. Sure they did. I mean, if they've got four and selling it that cheap. Right? You should at least show it to her so she can see if it's hers. Yeah, okay, I can do that. But this is a boy's bike, okay? So it can't be, not to- A scanner darkly, although not our picture of typical science fiction, is undoubtedly part of this genre. What helps to situate it within the context of science fiction is exactly what makes it unconventional. Rotoscoping. Rotoscoping is an animation technique in which a live-action version of the film is drawn over frame by frame. This process is often associated with motion capture, however, it functions in a very different way. Although rotoscoping and motion capture do have similar beginnings, the techniques have diverged. In our current state of film production, motion capture aims to reappropriate movement into a computer-generated program and is then used in an existing animated project. Rotoscoping in early cinema was used in a similar fashion. It was used as a way to replicate believable movement in animated films. However, with the development of new technologies, Rotoscoping has moved more into the realm of interpretation rather than replication. Rotoscoping in this film is intended to be an interpretation of both movement and likeness. This distinction is extremely important in understanding how the technique reinforces science fiction elements. There are two major approaches to genre identification as outlined by Rick Altman. These are semantic and syntactic. The semantic approach is essentially a list of genre conventions such as characters, events, sets, etc. A film does not need to have every element on the list, but it does need some. The syntactic approach is concerned more with foundational themes presented throughout the genre and looks to explore the consistencies in structure. This is not to emphasize one approach over the other, but rather to discuss genre in relation to both methods. A Scanner Darkly employs both semantic and syntactic science fiction elements through its use of rotoscoping. I will note here that there are other aspects of science fiction presented in the film, but I will focus only on those that relate to the use of rotoscoping. The semantic elements in conversation with the rotoscoping are future technologies, use of special effects, and the portrayal of a dystopian future. The future technologies outlined in Dick's original novel are brought to fruition visually and thematically through the formal technique of the film. The scramble suit is the most obvious link to the rotoscoping. Although intended to protect the officers, the scramble suit complicates the main character's struggle with personal identity. It is comprised of pieces of real people's images placed on top of the image of the wearer. This is exactly how rotoscoping is used stylistically in the film. The images are meant to closely resemble the actors while simultaneously obscuring their actual image. Thus, the rotoscoping serves as a scramble suit for the film itself. Substance D is a central future development. It is this hallucinogenic drug that Bob is hunting down as an undercover agent. The two hemispheres of my brain are competing? Yes. yes. But why? Substance D. It often causes that functionally, and this is what the tests confirm. Damage has taken place to the normally dominant left hemisphere, and the right hemisphere is attempting to compensate. Cross-cutting, we call it, related to split-brain phenomena. This competition causes hallucinations that manifest for Bob as characters he interacts with change in appearance. Bifurcation is an important dimension of the film. The drug not only divides the brain chemically, but it also segments Bob's life. He is both the detective trying to clean up the streets and the addict ingrained in a small drug-fueled community. Throughout the film, Bob struggles to reconcile these two identities. 
To make matters more complex, he is forced to monitor himself, thus further segregating his identities and constantly pushing this dichotomy to the forefront of his mind. Attempting to rectify a singular sense of self out of these two identities leaves him an empty shell devoid of any distinguishable personality. The bifurcated identity is recreated formally through the use of rotoscoping. The film itself has two identities, the live action video used as a base and the animated representation of the story. It may seem as though one is a real image and the other is an artistic effect, however, this is entirely inaccurate. The live action video serves as a basis for the film that is only fully realized when the animated images are added on top of it. This is not to say the base of the film is no longer important. The aesthetic style of the rotoscoping used is intended to preserve the likeness of the actors. Thus, trying to separate them would leave the film dead and empty, much like Bob in the end of the film. The surveillance system is another major future technology in a scanner darkly. Rotoscoping replicates the surveillance process in two ways, physically and conceptually. The physical processes of the surveillance team is a mirror of the physical rotoscoping process. Scanners and animators both sit in front of computer screens where they watch the actions of people with whom they have never had any personal interaction. Furthermore, they both scrutinize every action and produce an interpreted version of what they see. A huge semantic consistency across science fiction is the use of special effects. Whether it is creating an entirely new solar system, or merely adding a single new piece of technology. Science fiction is intended to present believable alternative worlds, and thus special effects have an important place within the science fiction genre. Rotoscoping takes care of the special effects, substituting digital or computer effects for hand-drawn animation. The main special effects are the scramble suit and the hallucinations. We have discussed the significance of the scramble suit in the film, but hallucinations are an equally important aspect of the story. Since Dick himself struggled with drug use and psychosis, the hallucinations are an important autobiographical element. Rotoscoping is quite possibly the best way to represent hallucinations. Someone who is hallucinating is aware that what they are seeing is not real. However, it does fit within their current psychological environment and thus becomes believable. In the film, we know the hallucinatory events are not actually happening in the world of the actors, or the diegesis of the film for that matter. However, we begin to question their validity, because it blends seamlessly with the animated environment. This environment is in constant motion. In a way, the entire film feels like a hallucination through its kinetic pulsing. We know what we are seeing is not really what is filmed in live action. However, it fits our idea of this world, and we get lost in the hallucinatory experience as a whole. Again, we know the images we see are not real, but they fit the reality we have entered and start to accept them as truth. The final semantic element represented through the rotoscoping is the illustration of a dystopian future. This is a near future that has been overtaken by drugs and unconstrained surveillance. The rotoscoped image is able to take our contemporary moment and change it ever so slightly as to provide a more futuristic and dystopian feel. This pairs our everyday environment with the futuristic technologies seamlessly ingrained. The syntactic elements presented in the film are not only presented in the rotoscoping, but rather, they are enhanced by the technique. The two major science fiction thematic dichotomies the film addresses are nature versus artifice and culture versus technology. Nature versus artifice is present throughout the whole film. Substance D itself is a natural substance that is synthesized into a hallucinogenic drug. Taking the drug creates an artifice that obscures the natural environment of the user. 
Similarly, the scramble suit creates an artificial visage out of a natural human likeness. This reinforces the film's complex relationship with identity. The rose scoping itself reinforces this dichotomy by taking natural live-action footage and creating an artifice on top of it. The only possibility for interaction with the nature of the film is through the artifice. The film heavily focuses on the interplay of culture and technology. This is a society entirely changed by the technological advancements it faces. These surveillance systems have entirely changed the culture of this future society. In the content of the film, the technology corrupts the culture. In the formal aspects of the film, however, the rotoscoping adds a different dimension. It is both an interpretive art meant to comment on our culture, but also still a technology. It is a technology that has taken over how we see the world presented in the film. We can only see the world through the lens of technology. This dichotomy is further complicated in that this very technological cinematic process actually adds a higher dimension to the artistic value of the film. Thus, it makes us question how our culture is influenced by technology, both beneficially and detrimentally. The clearest distinguishing factor for science fiction is outlined by Darko Suvin as cognitive estrangement. He uses this as the primary distinguishing factor that separates science fiction from fantasy. Estrangement takes the familiar and makes it unfamiliar. It occurs when we are asked to explore possibilities not present in our current environment. This distinguishes science fiction from more naturalistic fiction. Cognition, in this definition, allows the audience to think logically and rationally about the fantastic elements presented. Essentially, cognitive estrangement is the transformation of the empirical environment in a way that is receptive to rational thought. Rotoscoping is a perfect formal illustration of cognitive estrangement. It is heavily rooted in reality because it relies on live-action footage. Thus, our reality is still present. We can think critically and rationalize the movements and likenesses presented by the rotoscoped image. Simultaneously, it separates us from the natural environment by creating a new fictionalized image. For instance, what was once a familiar shot of people talking in a car is now an unfamiliar animated image that disrupts our preconceived notions of how this should look. In this way, we have created a new reality. This use of rotoscoping takes the empirical image and obscures it with a painterly aesthetic. It begins to enter the territory of the uncanny valley. This is where a reproduced image so closely resembles reality, yet still feels unnatural. This uncanny resemblance to reality makes us constantly aware of the animated image, since it relies on the live-action footage, the imagined environment stems from latent possibilities in the empirical environment. The rotoscoped image is inherently different and creates a separation. But this separation is not so fantastic that we cannot discern how this imagery could be linked to our reality, and thus it encourages us to question if this is a possible future for our own society. This film could very well be live action, but Linklater chose to use a very unusual form of animation to tell this story. He uses the technique to transform the work of Philip K. Dick into a truly cinematic science fiction experience. The rotoscoping reinforces the major themes as well as secures it a spot within the science fiction genre. A Scanner Darkly is a great illustration of how not only does the content make a film science fiction, but rather how formal cinematic techniques can help to determine the genre of a film. The use of new, unique, and imaginative filmmaking techniques can provide a purely filmic experience that will evolve science fiction as a cinematic genre.